Hi there folks, welcome back to my channel and for this video I'm going to be doing another video for my History, Myths and Legends series which with how things are going at the moment might become at least a, something of a semi-permanent semi uh, feature for the channel to see, see how things go, how things develop. Fingers crossed, touch woods, I will be able to get out at least some point this year and at least go for some sort of adventure. But then again, it is all very much kind of dependent on kind of regulations and restrictions and how things are progressing. And yeah, but it, we, we can all but love but hope. And for this, so for this video, I'm actually going to be looking at something from Scottish folklore mythology that again might not be as well known as it possibly should be because we've got in the U the US has got Bigfoot or Sasquatch the Himalayas have got Yeti Scotland not to be outdone has its own version and that is the big grey man of Ben McDewey but I will get onto that in a minute, some housekeeping first. And if you are enjoying my videos, if you are enjoying my channel, then click on the subscriber button, click on that notification bell, leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And it does help the channel to grow. And I do try and reply to as many comments as I possibly can. And I do love hearing from you all. And if you would like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channel's coffee.com page in the comment section below, as well as in a pinned comment in the comment section. So, to get back to what I was talking about with the big grey man of Ben McDewey, uh, to a wee bit of background information for you all, if you are not too sure where, uh, the, where Ben McDewey is, it's up in the Cairngorms mountain range which is in the northeast corner of Scotland and Ben McDewey itself is actually the second highest mountain in the whole of, UK, of, of the UK and it's the second highest mountain in Scotland and it, so that so it's kind of Ben Nevis is the highest, Ben McDewey is the second highest and the Cairngorm mountain range is actually part of the Cairngorms National Park, which, if I remember correctly, is the second national park to have been created in Scotland after the Loch Lomond and Trussocks National Park. So we've got Loch Lomond, Loch Lomond and the Trussocks National Park in the west coast, or over towards the west coast, and the Cairngorms National Park over towards the northeast coast. And with parts of the Cairngorm mountain range, they can be quite exposed and quite remote and you can be up there and, and there not be a sing another soul around for miles which I think might be an aspect that plays into the experiences that people have claimed to have had up at Ben McDewey especially in relation to the Big Grey Man and generally with the Big Grey Man what people have claimed to have happened is that generally most of the experiences have been they'll be up on Ben McDewey and when they're, I think it's usually when they're coming back down and they'll hear footfalls, you'll, you'll hear somebody walking behind them and as usually they'll describe it as for every few footsteps they take whoever is following them is taking one so it's kind of giving this impression that there's somebody else there and they're extremely tall and they usually feel this kind of foreboding and dark and oppressive presence uh, almost as if like, they're not welcome there, they need to get off the mountain and a lot of times when people have ha had that experience they've actually more or less ran off the mountain or ran as far as they possibly can in order to try and get away from what is up there or what they claim to be up there and there have been the odd case, the odd time when people have actually claimed to have seen the big grey man and even, even though it is more common that people hear the footsteps, feel the presence, there's, there have been the odd time that people have seen them or have said they've seen them 
and what they've said they've seen as being an eight foot tall bipedal hominid uh, with uh, that's essentially covered in long grey fur or hair, hence why he's called the Big Grey Man. And I think it was the first reported, no, this is the first reported kind of case was made in 1891 and it came from a guy, an explorer called Norman Colley. And apparently uh, the incident that he was reporting took place a few years before. I don't know, was it supposed to be like, it was like 10 to 15 years before him reporting it was when the event took place because I think it was roughly back like about 19, uh, 1875 that this supposed to have happened and essentially Norman Colley was his explorer and he'd been up at Ben Dewey kind of exploring the area hiking and he was coming back down the mountain and what he experienced was hearing the footfalls and he described it as being for every few, is it two, three or four uh, footsteps that he made? No, is it, no, is it for every few footsteps he made, this figure made one, or that whoever it was took one footstep, or kind of t took one stride. And to him, it suggested that, that whoever it was, whatever it was, had a stride that was three to four times the length of his. And he, as, it, as he was hearing the, these kind of like footsteps and this kind of crunching in the gravel behind him, he felt this dark, oppressive presence that, as I was saying before, led to him essentially trying to run away and run his way off the mountain. And he was certain that he was being followed. He was, as far as he was concerned, he was being followed off the mountain by some un some unknown creature. And apparently, there have been quite a few reported events or reported experiences, especially during the twentieth century, because I think it's probably been that. In the 20th century, more and more people were heading up into the Cairngorms in order to go hiking, mountain climbing, exploring, kind of experiencing the, the, the beauty and the, 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 just the sheer drama of the, the landscape of the Cairngorms. Because this is one of, I think it is one of the coldest, if not the coldest, part of Scotland, if not the UK. And I think that can add to the, the challenge of being up in the Cairngorms is the weather and how it can change and essentially could have been able to deal with that. And even though most of the, the vast majority of the experiences that people have had of the big grey man have been of hearing footsteps, feeling the presence, there have been a handful of people who have claimed to have actually seen the big grey man. And I would say before, what they have seen has been this eight foot tall bipedal hominid with this kind of like long grey hair or fur that's covered the whole body. And again, a lot, most of these people, their instinct was essentially to flee off the mountain and get as far away from this creature as they possibly could. And even though there have been these people who have come forward kind of saying that they've had these experiences, there have been others who have tried to explain, kind of scientifically, kind of kind of give a, a rational a rational rational explanation for what's happened, or for why people might have experienced what they've experienced, and these include the fact that yeah, when the, when a lot of people are up in the Cairngorms, they're up in a remote and wild area, they're up where there's not really anybody else. Again, they could be up there by themselves for the whole day and not see MD or kind of come across MD or, or have any other human interaction. And it has been suggested that a lot of what people are hearing when uh, they're hearing like footsteps behind them and they're hearing these kind of 
what they think of somebody with a really long stride falling down the mountain could actually be them hearing uh, like their footsteps being echoed back to them back out from their surroundings I mean the fact that yeah there, there can be a lot of low clouds uh, there can be a lot of mist or fog that can again kind of distort sound it can possibly make you hear you, you make people think that they are hearing something else than what they're actually hearing and it can all kind of trick your minds and can make you think that something's happening that isn't really happening and again it's, it's probably a bit like kind of walking down like into a dark area and you can't really see what's going on and again you might start to think that something's happening that might not be happening sorry that I had to stop just there I was like it's a bit of a tickle in my throat and I had to go get a drink yeah I was like I always kind of wonder why that always ends up happening when you're doing a video that yeah, you always, you always end up having some sort of kind of cough and fit or a tickle in the throat. Anyway, get back to what I was talking about. I was talking about the scientific explanations or possible reasons given for people's experiences up on Benwick Dewey. And as I was saying, people have suggested that if, if environmental or weather conditions might kind of play a part in what people think are happening and essentially create <clears throat> auditory or visual tricks that might make you think that something's happening that isn't really taking place. And one of the visual kind of uh, tricks or that people have suggested that might actually explain <clears throat> why people think that they've seen the big green man has been the Brock Inspector. Which essentially the Brock Inspector is when you are usually up, <coughs> when you're up in here on raised ground, like up in the mountains, and there's low clouds, but the sun's also out. So essentially the sun has to be behind you and it, the, the sun throws your shadow onto the low cloud and it kind of creates this visual effect, almost as if you're seeing some sort of, kind of gigantic figure that's looking back at you or it's kind of create this, this sense that there's someone else there when it's really only you and it can, I think it also kind of creates this kind of like halo around the head of the shadow as well which kind of can create this kind of really creepy visual. I've never actually experienced a Brock Inspector myself I've only ever seen video footage or photos of a Brock Inspector and it does look pretty creepy and to be honest I'm like yeah there's part of me that's kind of interested in seeing a Brock Inspector myself just to kind of see what it is actually like kind of to, to witness one but there's also part of me that thinks it would be just really really creepy to actually see one so even though I do think that the whole story of uh, the big green man is really interesting and it's kind of a story that I do think needs to be kind of better known or kind of more widely recognised. The kind of scientific explanations for what people have experienced also kind of are kind of quite intriguing as well that it kind of does kind of give an aspect of or does give an insight into how our surroundings and our landscape can actually affect what is going on inside our heads and can it affect how we re uh, react to what is taking a place around us. So, but before I kind of finish the video, I uh, remembered that I'd actually managed to get this book off my shelf before I started shooting the video. Uh, if you are interested in Scottish literature, probably the most famous use of the Brock Inspector in Scottish literature as in the Confessions is it's the private memoirs of Confessions of a Justified Sinner by James Hogg which is usually uh, the, the title for this is usually shortened to either Confessions of a Justified Sinner Confessions or a Justified Sinner so but again 
there is a scene in this that does actually have a Brock Inspector and it's kind of again kind of just adds to the kind of whole creepiness of Brock Inspectors but that is kind of a book that I would recommend and I purposely did get that book down because I was going to be talking about Brock Inspectors as part of this video and yeah Big Grey Man doesn't appear in, in Confessions but a Brock Inspector does so hopefully you all enjoyed this video hopefully you will continue to enjoy my channel and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.